carbon fiber tube connectors. If you've been following along on our journey to build the Dark Arrow 1, you've seen that we went through a decent amount of effort to come up with a solution to structurally join carbon fiber tubes. Now these are a section of the rudder pedals in the Dark Arrow 1, and as you can see, they're built out of carbon fiber tubes. Now we didn't go directly to this final version of the tube connector. We went through a bit of an evolutionary process to arrive at the solution. We started out with a 3D printed tube connector. This was made on a carbon 3D printer using their EPX82 resin. After we made this one, we tested out our first molded carbon fiber tube connector, which looks like this. Now this one was made using really simple, quick and dirty techniques, but it taught us enough to move to our final version of the molded tube connector, which looks like this. Now we showed some of this progression online. We showed some of the analysis, machining the molds and the whole evolution of the tube connector. And we ended up getting a lot of feedback from hobbyists, university teams asking how to make a similar tube connector. I think that this final version is outside the scope of what most hobbyists can do in their garage just because of some of the tools involved. But this quick and dirty tube connector is really easy to make. And so that's what this video is about. So I'm gonna show you how to make this tube connector, the quick and dirty version. I actually filmed the whole process a couple months back and I just sat on the footage, so I'm gonna show you now. Uh, I'll talk more at the end, but yeah, let's get into it. How to make the tube connector. This component's pretty simple geometrically. It's just the intersection of two uh, hollow cylinders. So you can see there's a cylinder here and then butted 90 degrees to it, there's a cylinder here. So what I'm gonna to try to do is make this out of carbon fiber and my plan is to just make basically a block of carbon fiber that's this shape and then after it cures I'm going to bore out these holes. First I have to make a mold though. This is the start of my mold. It's going to be made out of MDF. MDF is actually kind of a garbage material but it's good for prototyping. Uh, production is not very great though because it's crumbly, it falls apart and it's dimensionally unstable. It swells and contracts with changes in humidity. But yeah, it's good for prototyping because it's uh, cheap and easy to work with. So, okay, here's my two mold halves. I'm gonna bore out a cavity in between the two mold halves that will represent uh, this part minus the holes. So I'm gonna do that on the drill press. The other activity I'm going to do on the drill press is uh, match drill four holes through these two parts uh, and they'll be on the four corners and that will be for bolts so that I can bolt these together I match drilled my four bolt holes so now I can bolt these two halves together and that will keep them fixed together really tight while I bore out the rest of the mold cavity. So I don't want the two halves moving relative to each other while I'm boring out the mold cavity. Next step, installing the bolts. I have the two halves bolted together and I'll tighten down. So now I'm going to bore a hole all the way through in one direction and then only halfway through perpendicular to that. So that's going to mimic this geometry. This is an inch diameter, outer diameter, and well, both arms of this are one inch outer diameter, so I'm going to use a one inch outer diameter bit or through this block. Before I bore the holes through this thing, uh, you'll notice there's kind of a mismatch on these faces. I'm gonna take this on the disc sander and go around and even up these faces so that everything's nice and square. Okay, quick time out to talk about safety. If you're following my footsteps and trying to use MDF, make sure you wear a respirator when you're cutting or sanding or drilling it because the dust is pretty nasty. And remember to wear uh, safety glasses and hearing protection. Take care of your body. Okay, I match sanded the sides of this so they're cleaned up, everything's nice and square. I'm ready to bore the holes through the sides on the drill press. Drill press. 
Wish me luck, this might be a little dicey. So I gotta get my feeds and speeds right. Uh, let's see, wood. Trying for one inch. Uh, close enough. My camera died right as I was starting this drilling. That's okay because my drilling technique was pretty messed up. For one, it looked a little dangerous. And two, it didn't come through here square. So I'm gonna start over and correct that. Okay, I have my new block, new and improved fixturing technique on the drill press here. So I threw in these pieces of aluminum angle, clamped everything so it's nice and rigid. Shouldn't move at all. Plus uh, I have it sitting flat on the table here. Drill press will not extend far enough to drill into the table, so I'm gonna have to remove it after I drill about halfway and then add some sacrificial scrap underneath, but I think this is the way to go. Okay, my fixturing method and drilling strategy worked out. This is the basic shape of the mold, so you can see there's a hole bored all the way through in that direction, and then this one just goes halfway through. Now I need to disassemble this and sand the interior because it's looking a little fuzzy, and then I'm going to put mold release on it. Okay, now that I have this apart, you can see how the final geometry of the part uh, aligns with the mold. I'm going to come in and sand this. As you can see, it's pretty fuzzy on the surface finish, and I'm going to round this corner to try to reduce any stress concentrations. And then there's a little bit of a drilling defect here. I'll blend that together and then put the mold release on it. To start, I'm just going to use some 180 grit sandpaper. Okay, I have one half sanded here on the left, and then the part on the right has not been sanded. So you can see how I've smoothed out that corner. And I don't know if it's that clear, but by rounding that corner, it's going to produce uh, a more rounded fillet here at the intersection of the two cylindrical cross sections on the final part. So you can see there's a little fillet in there. By rounding this in the mold, that's going to increase the diameter of that fillet and just kind of blend these parts together. The idea is you don't want sharp corners because sharp corners create stress concentrations, which ultimately weakens the final part. I temporarily reassembled the mold so that I can come in here and match sand. Uh, that discontinuity, you can see where the two halves came together there, where I made that little radius. Uh, there's a little step, so I'm going to try and clean that up as well, blend them together. This is just adhesive back paper so you can stick a little piece on your finger and get in there and smooth it out. See it's a little bit better blended now. I made a couple tick marks on the two mold halves so that I can see how to line it up when I reassemble this thing. i got to take it apart and put mold release on it. The holes I drilled through for the bolts are a little bit oversized, so there's some play there. They don't act as locating pins or anything like that. So when I reassemble it, we'll line up these little tick marks, and that should keep it all aligned. For mold release on this little mold, I'm actually going to use this Johnson Paste Wax. We don't normally use this for mold release, but the good thing about this is it uh, dries pretty quickly. So I'll be able to move fast and proceed to making a part on this right away. You can see the wax soaking into the mold. Uh, it's basically just filling in the pores in the wood and put it on with a lint free cloth a couple coats and let it cure in between coats pretty simple uh, also remember to wear a respirator with this stuff it's kind of stinky i'm coating all surfaces of the mold just case uh, in case i spill any material uh, it'll make it easier to clean up the mold while my wax is drying, I'm going to make a couple plugs, and the plugs are going to work like this. So this is the part, and I'm going to make a plug that fits here and here, and then this area of the mold will remain open, and I'll pour a mixture of chopped carbon and resin in the top of the mold here, and then the plugs will keep it from running out the sides. Here's how the plug is going to work. I have a piece of one-inch diameter aluminum tubing here, and I'm going to cut off a couple little stub sections of it, 
and then I'll just fill it with Bondo, make a little plug or cap that will sit in the mold like that. Finished up my plugs, so now I just need to wax them and then I can tack them in place in the mold and then close up the mold. Filled up the mold and let it cure. Now I'm going to demold the part. Whoa. Piece of cake. Oh. Broke the mold there. You broke it? Yeah, the mold split right there. Okay, what did I tell you about MDF? It falls apart. Awesome. Time use. Yeah, one time use mold. Probably super glue this back on here. Is the basic shape. I'm going to use my mold as a drilling fixture so that it holds it nice and tight uh, while I'm drilling it. I don't want anything moving. Uh, while I still have the one inch drill bit in the drill press, I'm going to use it to basically kind of score the center point where I want to drill and then I can swap out the drill bit to the smaller three quarter inch bit. Okay, so after we demolded the part, trimmed it up, sanded it, this is the final result. So it's obviously not the prettiest part cosmetically, but the basic shape and functionality is there. As you can see, the hardest part of the process is just making the mold itself. Uh, mixing up epoxy and chopped carbon fiber and adding it to the mold is not very difficult. Uh, the manual process ends up creating some porosity in the part, and you can see if you look in the center here, I don't know if that's visible, but some pretty large cavities in there, which do create some structural defects. So you wouldn't want to use this uh, in an aircraft application where your life depends on it, which led us to develop a more advanced process that eliminated the porosity. But if you're building something like a drone or a go-kart, uh, something unmanned, this still has a lot of strength to it and would probably do the job. I'm sure everyone's wondering, okay, how strong is this? Uh, I think I'll, I'll save that for a part two video where we test this and break it. This video is getting a little bit long as it is. My objective was just to show the basic premise of building a mold and making this part. And then I think you can take this, experiment with it, and build upon the process a little bit further and make your own connectors. So hopefully this was useful and allows you to advance your own projects at home. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or ideas, thoughts on this whole process, definitely leave a comment below. Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.